Welcome back to the Clock Shop. This is Jim with J.R. Clocker on eBay. Let's see what happened at the Clock Shop this week. Here we have a really nice new Haven time only um, 12 inch drop. Uh, unfortunately, it's been to the butcher shop. Why, why, why? Why? I mean, this is hard enough to do it on this bridge anyway, but it, it's just amazing. I just wish yeah, you just stopped doing it. You know, give up, go somewhere else. Looks like it's been, when they were doing it, they broke it. So they, uh, they had to solder it, which that's not the way it's supposed to be done. So what they're saying is they had it out somewhere along the line. They had this apart. Now, I can guess Westminster Chime German clock with three trains. It's a pain. Uh, <clears throat> I guess... You know, Yankee two train time and strike movement can be a pain. But this is a time only. A time only. All right. Well, it's going to have to get done. Um, it is actually like, look at all the oil. Can you see the sheen? Oh, my God. Anyway, let's get to work. Okay, let's take another look at this. I'm going to, uh, what is this? I don't know, I can't make sense of all those markings here. Um, maybe a 15 inch drop, I don't know, it says 15 there. All right, <clears throat> let's, uh, let's take a spring out. Let's catch a spring. This is not the ones I like. All right. All right. If you don't have um, a spring winder, I mean, a, not a spring winder, a, a letdown tool, you really need to get one. It makes life so easy. All right, I'm gonna go down here. See if I can. Really trying to get better views here. All right, so here's the click spring. Here's the click. Um, I'm just gonna take the click spring out, put it up on top, and then release the click spring which is like has a mountain of uh I'm trying to do this without that's a mountain of grease on top of it look at i want to show you this uh let me see here do i have one handy yes i do all right this is going to go in clean Usually, I like it going the wrong way. There we go. Anyway, I usually this is look at all that. And then underneath the click. Now I have a tendency to put this back together. I do it now. Oops, I missed. Tendency to do it now because I better forget to do it later. Oh, how it breaks loose on me. Okay, there you go. And that also tells me I need to check that and make sure. But look at all the. You see it in there? See it there? I mean, it doesn't smell like WD 40, but. Alright, so now it's let down. I'm going to pre-clean this, and I'm going to then come back and take it apart and then clean it again. I like to do that only because um, if 
If I don't, then I have to take it apart, clean it, put it back together, take a look around, see what absolutely needs to be done because there's so much junk in these holes. Look at that one. So much junk in holes that uh, I like to know what I'm getting into before um, I take it all apart because then I can mark things and stuff like that. And uh, so let me go clean it and I'll be right back. Okay, we're back from the initial cleaning. Um, just taking a general look over around the... Uh, actually, it does move pretty smoothly, but we're going to do bushings anyway because uh, I really don't like that and it gives me an excuse to take a look at this wheel. I don't like... I don't know whether you can see. I don't like the angle that this is coming into the this uh, wheel at. So, maybe you can see it better there. I just don't like it sloping in, and it's been beat up right in here. So we're gonna we're gonna examine that right right after we uh, take a look at. All right, you want to check uh, when I look at. All right, this wheel turns counterclockwise off the great wheel. So that means that the spring is running, uh, the spring wheel is running clockwise. Okay, so you wanna hold up here a little bit and you wanna go back and forth, rock back and forth. And it looks like this was bushed, this was bushed, even this one here. Yeah, the front plate has been bushed. This is what drives me crazy. Somewhere along the line, and this one needs bushings. This uh, needs bushing there. Anyway, so let's turn around to the back. And uh, <clears throat> again, counterclockwise. So I just, it just tells me which way the wheels are grinding from. Okay. And again, we're going to go this way, pull it back up. That's where they should be. This is where they're grinding to. It looks like I have one. This one's not bad. As I said, it, it probably could get away with not doing any. But then what would this, this video wouldn't be any fun. Um, no. But uh, we really want to get um, a good answer here. I wanted to... I want this movement to last for a long time. Uh, as far as the spring goes, we'll determine that after we take it all the way apart. And I, I get to see that spring all the way out, see how set it is. It may be a little bit on the set side here. As, uh, as far as I can tell, it probably will need a new spring. So we're going to do a couple bushings. I'm going to now turn and tell you a trick. Some people will will be aghast by it but it's a trick it's it's, it's just for, for me and speed i could sit here and take pictures of it if i wanted to um i don't you know i don't do a ton of th this movement from new haven i do a ton of um uh seth thomas movements in this but these are a little bit rare so i come in here and i'll put a little dot and that's a what we call face up dot I'll go down here. I'll put a dot there. Of course, you don't have to do it for that. Um, and uh, so I need to do one for here. And I need to do one here. Now, pretty much probably the second cleaning is going to get rid of it. But definitely the third cleaning after bushings, that those marks will be gone. By, 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 by that time, I'll have, you know, taken this thing apart a couple times. So... Uh, it won't be too bad. Now, let's see here. I can actually pretty much tell. This is pretty on the modern side. So let me get a wrench. I'll be right back. One quick thing. Note. I I do take this off. Let's see the easiest way to get it off here. Ay, 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 ay. I think I went the wrong way. I'm going to try it this way. I, it just didn't look like this could fit through the hole, but it can I was wrong. Okay, I'm gonna take this off. 
take a peek around. Take that off, put that aside. Put this in there. I just can't believe how bad they did this. Ah, uh, well. Off to the cleaner. Okay. Loosen them up a little bit. And I straighten up the, the bench a little bit. You have to understand that um, I do this full time. So my bench is clean in the morning and right before I leave. Other than that, it's a work in progress. Um, don't want to hear a lot of comments about it just to work like i was using this a little bit ago so it's sitting here every once in a while i'll go through and i'll clean the, the tools i used off as you might see i did and then start again but i'm not i'm not like trying to be uh crystal clean clean here all right so um this this plate is the one that's not a problem, except for this bushing here. That needs to be taken care of. Look at that. And that needs to be cleaned off, too. You know, you start doing this stuff, and you, you got heat that somebody, you know, I have to re, really inspect this. But, uh, you know, there's a proper way to seat a wheel, and then there's this way. And, uh, ugh, what a mess. I will try to work with it. If I can, I will take it apart. I just hate to add any more heat to this, to this brass. Um, anyway, let's continue. Anyway, I'm still struggling a lot. Well, this is the new, the old spring, and this is the new. I think I'm going to go with the new spring. I, I am going to clean both of them. This one I'll clean up, and uh, I don't know. I, I further testing, I'd just rather go with a brand new spring. So, it's off to the cleaner for you, well, for both of them, actually. This is the old spring. And this is a new spring. I just wanted to give you a little... Uh, look at what it is. Um, I'm going to test this a little bit more, but I think we're going to be keep staying with this one. Uh, I'll check the uh, inside here to make sure it's okay. and Because uh, I don't want it to snap like the first time I put it back in. But we'll see. I'll let you know what, what, what my decision is. Okay, I have uh, the bushing machine pretty much uh, set up. Uh, I'm actually, uh, I wanted to show you this piece right here. Um, this is, a, this is a, a tool made especially for doing the escapement bridge. And uh, I had it in there nice, and now I have to, okay. And it just helps support it. I'm going to lock this down almost. I have to get in here and check uh, the um, location of uh, um, the uh, center. And so that's I'm going to sneak in front of you here. I'm gonna, then I'm going to try to show you um, somewhere a little bit. We're going to do a little bit of a, we want to show a little bit. There isn't much of a gap in this one, but I do want to make sure that it's centered correctly and not, uh, okay, now there we go. All right. All right, so we get this locked down pretty tight. 
I'll go up here and then I check it again. Yep, it's tight. Anyway, so I wanted to show you, because they peen this in, there isn't much of a, uh, a wear gap here. Um, so it's pretty much centered just slightly this side of the center of the hole. Uh, that's away from where these peen marks were. Um, and uh, this, this is one of the rare times. I am going to flip it over to put the bushing into it, but it's one of the rare times I you cut from the, the outside of the plate to the inside of the plate. Um, anyways, one of the rare times I do it. Let's put it that way. Is there a right or a wrong way? I don't know. Um, that's for everybody else to comment on. I just uh, um, I just want to make sure here that I'm looking at. I have my bushings already set. I only have to do two bushings on this one. Okay, so I pull out my. I'm really trying to show you more about this. Where okay, so it's slightly smaller. It's a uh, 3.47, and I put this usually put that one right here. So I know that's the last one that I do, and then I go two back. You can't see my box here, but I start with a 2.47. Uh, uh, I can go smaller than that if I think I need to, and then a then a two point. Uh, 2.97 so line them up here and for this one because it's the escape wheel and it's a little funky I am going to go start with a 1.97 and get things rolling with that one and I'm going to try to try to show you I have a tendency to put a finger on the shaft just to put just slight pressure, make sure nothing moves and it doesn't want to go away from the, the hole. Okay. And this one, I'm actually kind of glad I did space it that way because it, it is the, I don't do a lot of uh, uh, escapement wheel bridges. It just doesn't, for whatever reason, it doesn't come up. So, but when I do, I like to take a little extra slow time with it because we're dealing with a lot of uh, uh, I would say like a thin plate here there's no push down that's a good thing <clears throat> because on these I have a plate underneath I have a plate up top to support it and uh, <clears throat> And you get to a point where you don't, this thing had been banged around so much, you really had to look hard for the center hole. And, uh, I think I caught a little bit of the post on that one, so I want to Why the black marks were on the cutter. All right, and here's the final one. All right, so let's see if we can get in there close to watch it. They did this thing with me, and they got a really good close up shot of us doing a Trying to do this, sorry, I'm trying to do this left handed. All right, this is where they had hit it before, right there. Um, I had to look at that closely and make sure that that wasn't like an old this. This didn't have a bushing in it, it just uh, had a hole cut in the metal. I, okay, we're back here. 
Anyway, so let's get this out of there. We'll put, I always put the tools right back in the box. No sense to uh, keep them laying around where they can fall away. So this is something I just have a habit of doing. All right. All right, so I'm going to... That hadn't been cleaned out for a week or two. Anyway, so I'm going to probably go with a um, an anvil down here. And I'm going to test, pre-test anvil I'm putting in. This is the only problem that you have with these, putting these in. I may have to actually do a stake. Okay, we've kind of gone in a new direction. I am going to do it with my uh, staking set. And uh, <clears throat> I'm going to put it in there. I've already kind of set it up. I'm going to get the uh, bushing square. And if you ever wanted to know what the soft side of your hammer is for, there it is. Perfect. I um, I guess I could have just sat it here and done it the same way. I could have done this, I guess. I don't know. Um, let me get that in shot. I guess I could have done it this way, but... More fun to take the staking set out. It's, it sits right here, so it's not a lot of big deal. Anyway, let me look this over. Gosh, it really went in nice, too. Really, really nice. All right. I shall return. They went back, and I did polish this uh, so much better now. Anyway, now it's time to fit the bushing and uh, to the pivot. And uh, I never have a problem going smaller pivots. It's, I'm not, you know, absolutely nuts. I don't go crazy over it. And uh, so we come in here with a cutting roach. Cut it up a little bit, a little bit at a time. So a little bit at a time, gonna need a little bit more. Again, if you've ever seen my uh, my uh, days I used to do this all by hand, normally I would have um, tape right there, but I'm only doing this one. When I'm just cutting for, to enlarge them, but if I'm cutting to put the, right, we're in, we're not big enough yet though. Almost, almost big enough. And then I gotta polish it. And uh this clear. Okay. Now let me get my polish. Burr, uh, burnish on it. Uh, always do a little back tread, then go regular uh, clockwise. Unless you're left-handed, and then you probably do it counterclockwise. Oh, beautiful, 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 beautiful. And the right openness actually helps the um, bushing last longer. 
and the pivot, by the way. All right, that's uh, number one. Let's get on to number two. All right, we're reset up. <clears throat> I don't want to go through the boring parts of setting this up, but I had to lower the these uh, arms again and get them to the right position. And so I have now the uh, live center in good position and we'll uh, get rid of that. And I apologize for putting my hand in front of you all the time. I'm going to try not to. Um, it's just that I'm just so used to doing this, you know, fast. <laughs> that uh, <coughs> it just comes second nature. And next thing you know, I'm done. And uh, this is like slow. Anyway. The black dots over here so again i'm putting my my finger behind it i am not going with the the smaller one that i did last time because this is not as delicate it's really uh, hammered in online so i'm not worried about it that way i'm done actually pushing it making sure that it's clear now it's just going to find the center every time and you know you do this same way with hand bushings you gotta when you're doing a hand uh, bushings by hand you, you got to put a lot of pressure make sure that you're cutting on the strong side of the worn bushing or the worn hole because most of these don't even have bushings and i was thinking about it earlier i don't want to give this clock back uh, with that bushing, you know, with a the pounding there. So I, I, I had to do the bushing. Whether it needed it or not, I had to do it just to say, hey, you know, the last guy did it right. That's the only legacy you, li you leave. Yeah, the last guy did it right. This time, this time it's easier because I don't have to um, mess around with the... Uh, with the um, with the the taking it apart and using the the watchmaker's uh, staking set, just go use the staking set that I always use here. Now, okay, so I get that in the way. Sorry to get about the hand. Maybe I'll cut the hand out. <sighs> anyway, old hand. All right, let's make sure that we're in position. Okay, now y'all seen me do this in, in the past. I do it here too. It just gives a little, I don't do it on the escapement wheels, but I definitely do it everywhere else. Just put a little, little chamfer. Eh, you can save for oil. You can save for just, I don't know, whatever. But I, I was taught to do it. I always do it. I just put just the slightest little chamfer. I'll go in here and look at it, and uh, yeah, just the slightest chamfer. Anyway, um, let me put it back together and see how it does. Okay, we finished the final clean. Let me get some of these tools out of the way. Now I want to put it back together. Um, the the spring has been oiled and clean, cleaned and oiled. Um, so we're going to go in here okay. Put that one in second wheel black mark up there eh, just fade it base barely there anymore. Uh, let's get the tube ready here, get that one in, and that sets me up for this one. Um,
Yeah, I could have this on assembly clamps, but these are with the it's time only is with the uh, with the back uh, when they're when they're on the back uh, braces. They they're pretty easy to put together without. Uh, some people use rubber bands and I get it. Um, some use plate separators and I get it. I use them too. Um, mainly when I'm putting together uh, three train. Um, I definitely do it when I'm doing any kind of like Gustav Becker. I use both of them on because... Uh, those early uh, pivots are, you can mess them up pretty bad. So, but yeah, just get them. Uh, you go in. That means you guys need to go in. Get it around. Sometimes I think about rubber bands may not be a bad idea. It's like uh, starting to get arthritis in this hand, so it's not easy sometimes when you're trying to hold this all together. And uh, there we go. When I'm done here, I'm going to show you one that kind of drives me crazy. Why? Why? I. Uh, I uh, have some issues with this movement because I'm not seeing it the way I see Seth Thomas movements and uh, it does it throws me off a little bit off my game of course just you know just too confident I think you know it all and I don't far from it let's just tighten them up a little bit So let me show you what throws me off. This wheel right here. On almost any every clock I can think of, this wheel is usually flipped over. And this um, cog here is up in here. And so when I, when, when I see it like opposite, you know, I'm like, what the heck? And uh, so... The, uh, just at it. It's spinning just a little bit nicer than it was when I first took it out. So let me move this up here because we're out. I hope we haven't been out of frame that much. But it's, it's, feel, it's feeling really nice and free. Um, and uh, I know I greased the, the, um, the mainspring. I have to finish greasing the rest of it. And uh, I'll get to that and I'll be right back. Okay, I've oiled it and um, it's ready to go. I... Uh, I wanted to see if you could hear uh, what a clean, properly oiled movement feels like when you go to wind it. There's just a little bit of a, I don't know, like an echo in it, and you probably can't hear it, but I can. And uh, it's nice. It's really nice. And it's good to see. 
um, get this spring clamp off and I'll be right back. One more thing I'd like to talk about on these, um, these uh, uh, time onlys. Look, you can, you can, I love that. Um, we're going to get this up on the wall and test it, uh, start testing it. And we'll be running it and you'll be seeing it. Sorry for the lighting. It's not great. Um, but there's, uh, I had to stop these other clock movements because you can't hear the beautiful tech this has. We'll let this run overnight, then we'll put it in a case and we'll start timing it. If you get a chance, please hit the subscribe button, uh, hit the like button, leave a comment, let me know what you think. We'll see you next time and thanks for stopping by.